Good morning to all of our Sioux Falls Christian families. We hope you and your family are enjoying a fun and, and a relaxing summer. At Sioux Falls Christian, we've been working diligently to create a reasonable and responsible plan for returning to our physical campus for the start of the school year on August 19. We're looking forward to welcoming you back as students and families to our school for a normal school year if possible. As a school, one of our goals each year is to build community. The traditional classroom model allows our teachers and students to be in the classroom together, devoted to instruction and learning, an activity engaged in growing together, both academically and spiritually. We believe this is where our community is best accomplished. It is our desire for our students and staff to be on campus this entire school year, actively engaged in curricular and co-curricular activities. We do appreciate your patience as we've worked on developing a comprehensive plan that accomplishes our shared desire to return to school in a normal setting, along with keeping our students and community as healthy as possible. Our aspiration, even in the uncertainty of what is ahead, is what we will strengthen our unity and testimony as the people of God called to this particular place, that we will equip each other and each child according to their distinct God-given giftedness and purpose, and that we will protect the most vulnerable among us. We do have students in our, and staff in our building each day that are immune compromised. Many of our families also have this same situation with a parent or a grandparent, an uncle or an aunt. As a neighbor-loving gesture and a neighbor-loving community, we want to do all we can to provide a safe learning and work environment for all of our students and staff and to help mitigate the spread to other loved ones. Given the fluidity of the situation we find ourselves in and have been in for the last five months, our plans to safely return to school in August will be constantly evaluated for necessary modifications. These plans embrace current recommendations for returning to school from the Center for Disease Control, the South Dakota Department of Health, and our local health department, along with recommendations from a medical team that we have formed within our school system. Please note that recommendations from each of these organizations will evolve between now and August 19, and we will be they will be taken into appropriate consideration which could result in changes to our reopening plan. This document outlines some of the procedures we plan to start the school year under, understanding that things may change. We do ask for your patience uh, with us as we continue to do what's best for our students and families and staff. Thank you. Well, I'm here with Jeremy Van Neuenhuizen, our high school and middle school principal. And first of all, Jeremy, I want to thank you for all the work you've done this summer in helping us get to this point where we're reopening school on August 19. And I just wanted to give you a chance this morning to talk to our middle and high school students and parents about uh, what's that going to look like uh, as the school year is going to start a little differently, kind of like we ended last year a little differently, we're going to start this year a little differently, but we are going to be in seats. And uh, we're going to do that in a safe way and uh, in a healthy way as, as we can, but also in a, in a way that we can teach our students. So why don't you give our, our parents and students just a glimpse of what middle high school is going to, to look like in a few key areas. Okay. so. Lunch is going to be a little different this year. We're going to have uh, we're going to have to think of ways to keep people distanced. We're going to try to stay safe as much as possible because we've been told that keeping students in cohorts as much as possible is is really a goal that we should shoot for. So that contact tracing is a little easier because really our number one goal is to stay in community all year long. So whatever we can do to do that is what we're going to try to shoot for. Um, so that looks a lot of different ways. Um, if we have a student that has a, a positive case, they, they will be able to learn from home just like they're learning from school. So it's our goal to set up the technology to make that possible. And teachers will be working on ways to make lessons flexible, whether their students are in the building or at home. They'll be able to learn the same thing at the same time as their classmates. Likewise, if a teacher were to come in contact with someone who's positive, we're coming up with ways for teachers to be able to teach from remotely with a sub in the classroom to supervise behavior, but 
really for the teacher to be able to, if they're feeling well enough, to be able to teach just like they would if they were in the classroom. Uh, really throughout the day we're just going to be doing things that uh, help us to stay distanced. You know, things like chapel, we're probably going to do uh, something in the classroom where they stay in their homerooms and we stream a praise band and a speaker and uh, hopefully we can still worship in community because that's what it's all about. It's really about staying in community as much as possible. If we learned anything after March 13, it's how much we miss our community and how important this Christian community is to our students, to our staff, to our families, and really that's what we're here for. Yeah, I think uh, that community piece is, is, is really big, and I think it's important for our families to know that uh, this is how we're going to start the school year. Um, it is our hope that in a month or two or three that oh, we yes. can change things back to more normal, we would but we don't know that. that. Uh, we do know we serve a sovereign God who does know that mm -hmm. and has that in, in his, uh, his hands. So that gives us uh, a lot of comfort. A couple areas that probably are, are more middle high school related would, would be uh, like athletics. Uh, can you tell us what we know so far on athletics? Sure, so this summer we were directed by the High School Activities Association to do kind of a three-phased three approach of opening. And so we're actually in phase three right now, which is pretty much the limits are pretty minimal. Um, we have to do things that um, like cleaning and uh, you know being smart with those kinds of things but other than that that's the phase we're in and we're hoping we're praying that during the fall all of our athletes all of our students can participate in athletics and we can have fans in the stands and all of that but that may look a little different we may have to we've been told we may have to limit the number of fans that come to games um, and do extra measures as far as cleaning and and keeping we just we really want to do everything we can to keep everybody in community, so whatever that takes is what we're going to do. I think uh, another area that is is really a K-12 or a pre-K-12 area, but uh, you have specific classes in in band and marching band and, and choir. I know we're we're waiting on some guidance on that yet. Is that correct? Yes, uh, the South Dakota Music Educators Association has told us that guidelines are coming. Uh, but we don't have those in hand yet. Uh, we are sure hoping, just like with our athletes, we really believe that um, music and extracurriculars are a key part of what makes the high school experience meaningful. And so we want to do whatever we can to make sure those things continue to happen as normal as possible, even though it's going to look different. Yeah, yeah. I know that uh, we, we did a survey of our teachers and, and uh, I think it's important to know, and I'm going to let you tell our parents uh, kind of where our teachers are at. I think it's kind of fun to hear yeah. some of the results that, that uh, give me the key takeaway from the survey we did. Sure, yeah, the thing I loved to read from our teachers, we, we surveyed the entire staff, and the things that I kept hearing were, we're praying for you guys, we're praying for wisdom, we're praying for discernment, and we just want to do whatever we can to be with kids. Um, that was really heartening to hear, and uh, it was great to read some res some uh, comments that they made and the questions that they had were all about being safe, of course. They know, too, that we have members of our community that are fragile, medically speaking, whether they be staff or students. So they want to be safe, but they also want to do everything they can to be effective and to stay in community together, which that's, that's awesome to hear. Right. We have a great staff. Uh, we do have a great staff. We've got great families, mm -hmm. and we're blessed with that. And, and we're very much looking forward to our families being back after five months. So definitely, thank you very much, Jeremy, for just giving us a, a few highlights of, of what high school and middle school could look like. Absolutely.